Hi everyone, welcome to a new video. Thanks for joining me today. So usually I upload on Thursdays, but um, this video is on Friday for a change. And next Thursday I have a new video planned for you. So I haven't uploaded in a while because I was so busy with all kinds of different drawings, but I finished a few. So now I can show you those. And this one I made for Patreon for the $10 tier and I'll be drawing a yellow rose in color pencil. And um, this drawing was focused on drawing free hint. So I'm going to start off with the sketch. And in the tutorial you can uh, see all that and I explain how you do that. It's super important to practice your free hand sketching skills. Uh, so this rose was focused on improving and uh, practicing that. So I'm starting out with a graphite pencil from Faber-Castell. It's an HB and I start out by marking um, the size of my rose. So I uh, imagine how large I want it to be on the paper and then I mark the very left edge of it and then I mark where I want uh, the right petals to end then a top and a bottle, bottom, and then I am trying to keep my rows within those markings. And then I started out with the very left petal. So when I do freehand sketching, um, doesn't matter if that's flowers or something else, or animals, I pick a point and then I start to draw my subject uh, based on that point. So. Some artists like to just sketch the very basic shape. And for this rose, for instance, that's an oval shape. It's quite oval. And then do all the details within. I like to pick a certain point and then just watch my reference photo and follow all the shapes that I see. So I picked the left petal and then I drew that. And then based on that petal, I started drawing all the petals next to it until I had the rose. So when I had the rose sketched out, I made sure to lighten up my sketch with the kneaded eraser because we're going to be working with quite light colors. So we're going to work with mostly uh, yellow tones and also some oranges. And those are not very opaque. So when your sketch is super dark, um, you will see your graphite lines through your uh, color pencil which is not very nice. That creates all kinds of nasty, uh, muddy colors. So I made sure to lighten my sketch up first by tapping with the kneaded eraser. Just tapping on my sketch, lightening up those uh, lines. And then when everything was lightened up nicely, I started by adding some colors. So I'm working with Faber-Castell polychromos, as always, basically. and. Um, I picked a few colors beforehand and what I like to do first is map out all the dark parts. So all the dark shadows in between the petals. And I started mapping those out with some neutral orange tones like terracotta and some other dark cadmium orange. And that makes it so much easier to see the shape of the flower after this part and then judge how light or how dark you can go with the rest. So you can see that I'm really working around all those lighter edges of the petals that are curving over a little. I'm just focusing on creating the dark shapes in there. And I'm starting out with quite um, a light pressure. So I don't press too hard on my pencil. I build up everything quite lightly. And that way you can add all kinds of other colors on top of that without the paper getting saturated. So uh, the paper I work on, as always, is Kenson 1557, 180 grams. But this kind of drawing, this kind of tutorial, you can do on basically every uh, usual regular drawing paper. Or even watercolor paper, if you have that. And after mapping out all those dark parts, I started doing the slightly darker yellow petals. So still the very lightest edges I kept open. So I kept working around those. But uh, the petals that are slightly more in shadow, I filled in with a darker yellow tone. 
still with light pressure. And after all those petals were filled in, I did the lightest edges, the very lightest bright edges with a, um, a light yellow tone that was cream. And then I had the whole rose filled in with the base layer. So then you can start building up the darker shadows, making those even darker and adding some detail. And eventually you can try to get rid of the paper texture. So in some of the petals I saw a little bit of green, so I also added some green. And that was a nice variation in colors. And after that I felt ready to really saturate that paper. So I picked a bright yellow and I went over everything with that bright yellow except for the very lightest um, parts. And I added a little bit more pressure and now the rose is getting that real nice saturated yellow tone. And after that to get rid of the texture of the paper I added the white Caran d'Ache luminance. So I use that only for burnishing, for blending. It works really nicely. It's a little bit more soft than the polychromos. So it works nice as a blender tone. And um, I don't use a lot of pressure when adding that because then I'm still able to add some final layers on top of that. So now I'm going in with a nice bright orange and making those darker shadowy parts even more bright and saturated because you see in the photo that um, those shadow parts are actually not very dark they're more very bright bright um, orange so I added a little bit more of that orange darkening up the shadows a little bit more and then went over um, the petals one final time to really make sure that the paper was smooth that you couldn't see any of the paper through it anymore and after that i did a bit of the stem you don't see very much of the stem in the photo but i just um, did a little bit of that very quickly i drew out the shape of the leaves that were sticking out and i added some uh, different greens some lighter green, some darker green, and then even some very dark gray for the darkest shadows. And then I did a bit of burnishing on that. So after that the drawing was finished. It took a little bit under two hours. So you can follow this one on Patreon for the $10 tier from start to finish with color list and a reference photo of course. And yeah, the link is in the description so if you want to follow that one. Uh, go have a look and then I hope you like this drawing let me know what you think of it and then I'll see you next week for a very fun new drawing that I finished so thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one